On March the 9th, 2015, the European Central Bank started their much anticipated and eagerly awaited bond buying programme known as quantitative easing. As a reminder, this programme was announced in January 2015 and targets the purchase of 1.1 trillion of European sovereign and quasi-sovereign bonds. The aim is to push inflation back towards the ECB's target of close to, but below 2%. In theory, a central bank creates money to buy bonds from financial institutions. This should push bond yields and borrowing costs lower, which in turn encourages businesses and people to borrow more. This should allow businesses to create more jobs and people to spend more money, all of which helps to boost the economy. The experience in both the US and the UK is that quantitative easing was very beneficial for asset prices, pushing bond yields lower and equity prices higher. But the actual effect on the real economy was less clear, with many commentators believing that QE didn't really influence economic activity. In Europe, we believe the ECB are targeting a couple of different ways for QE to be effective. Firstly, by increasing the amount of euros in circulation, it should weaken the euro, thus benefiting export industries. Secondly, by reducing the potential returns on fixed income securities, it might encourage banks to lend more funds to the real economy and thus stimulate activity. Finally, by what's known as the signalling effect, which means that the ECB has finally demonstrated to markets that it is aware of the problems in the economy and is now actively addressing those problems. At the time we recorded this video, the ECB QE programme has only been operational for three weeks. But it appears to be working pretty much as the ECB suggested. Purchases of bonds are running at about 9 billion per week, seem to be across the maturity curve from two years to 30 years, and have an average duration of between eight and nine years. There was an initial significant rally in the prices of all bonds, from two years out to 30 years, and from Germany to Italy. Indeed, the major surprise was probably the effect on longer dated bond yields, notably the 30-year area, where concerns about the limited supply of bonds saw yields fall quite dramatically, especially in Italy. It is now estimated that close to 30% of the European sovereign bond market is trading with negative yields. The euro currency continued its recent appreciation, no doubt to great cheers and applause from the ECB headquarters in Frankfurt. The fall to parity against the US dollar now only appears to be a matter of time, and many prominent market commentators are forecasting further falls to 0.8 or 0.85 against the US dollar. The effect on equity markets also appears to have been mildly positive, with the German DAX market hitting new highs and the Euro stock 600 index close to historical highs again. Let's look back to our three channels to see what might happen going forward. In terms of the first channel, it seems likely that the Euro will continue its recent fall, although we are cautious in the short term given the speed of the fall so far, but we expect parity to be eventually broken. Secondly, it appears that banks have already begun to reduce the price they are charging small and medium-sized peripheral companies for bank loans. This is a real positive sign for the European economy. And thirdly, the market has now accepted that the ECB mean business, and we are no longer hearing complaints that the ECB is behind the curve. However, the real sign of success for the ECB's QE programme would be whether it can push inflation expectations higher. And in that sense, we think this is one of the most important charts to watch in Europe right now. It is a graph of the expected five-year European inflation rate in five years' time. We believe this measure really needs to be moving back towards 2% and preferably above 2%. But finally, we remain convinced that the start of this QE programme signals the low in European sovereign bond yields. 
in both the US and the UK, the start of their QE programmes marked a low point in bond yields, and we feel the same should be generally true in Europe. It might take another month or two, but we believe European bond yields will end the year higher than current levels.